This question to Roberto Lovato. Um, the whole overall policy of immigration right now, and especially here in California and then going down to the border. Well, uh, you have a radical transformation of the, the political and demographic topography of the United States happening right now. It's concentrated in the Southwest, and it's because of the growth of Latino and other populations, but especially the Latino uh, population. And you're seeing it in the streets. It's altering our political system, and you're seeing it in our electoral process. And I think that instills a lot of fear in certain powers that be, because it's it's no longer kind of the black-white politics in the era of the Southern strategy. We're watching something take place that nobody really has an idea where it's going or what's going to happen. We do know, for as for example, as reported in the LA Times, that immigrant voters are going to radically transform not just the southwestern United States, but the entire United States in the coming years. And this is inevitable unless there's some sort of massive tragedy, which I hope not, and I would fight uh, with every bone in my body, but as would others. Uh, but, so we have to look at, uh, it's just an issue of control. The border is not a fact. The border is an idea, okay? The, the border is violated every day by the primary criminals that are, in fact, transnational corporations that cause migration in the first place. And so it's... It's no coincidence that we're focusing on, for example, the undocumented worker and not on the employer that hires them in the debate. They are breaking the law, if anybody's breaking the law, as much as, if not more, than the undocumented worker, yet the entire debate is focused on the human being and not the citizen that is the corporation, because to focus on them, we would have to, for example, apply the death penalty to corporations and take away their citizenship, as we do with prisoners. And that's, that's I think, what's at stake here, uh, Amy. Um, let me go to Christopher Shearer, staff attorney for the Center for Human Rights and Constitutional Law. Um, what about the responsibility of the employer versus the workers? Well, I mean, there's no question that employers are under an obligation to comply with, you know, all the, the, the rules and regulations with regard to who they hire and hiring you know, legal, or at least checking the status of the people that they hire. But in this situation, all those things have been done. And, you know, if the employer in this situation may be uh, subject to fraud, uh, a victim in this situation. And it doesn't change the fact that uh, ICE is coming into these, uh, these factories without color of, of, of warrant without uh, exigent circumstance that could justify the types of detentions that, they're ta that are taking place, and uh, holding citizens and permanent residents against their will. And what about the companies, Roberto Lovato, that benefit, uh, that are profiting off of the increased militarization, particularly along the border? Well, we've, we're watching the birth of what some people like Deepa Fernandez and others are calling the military-industrial migration complex. Uh, a set of interests, economic, political, uh, that are profiting politically and economically from uh, this new, what I would call a war on immigrants. If, say, the drones at the border, or the National Guard at the border, or the fact that the ICE, the Immigration uh, Agency, is in fact the most militarized arm of the federal government besides the Pentagon. A lot of people don't know this. And so if you look at that, those are indicators of a war, of an enemy. And so we know from Iraq that the government acts not just out of what it says it's going to do, but for other reasons. So why not apply that logic to what's happening with immigration? Because I think immigration is about controlling immigrant workers, f putting fear in them. And I think it's about electoral machinations that we're seeing especially by the Republicans, but and also a lot of Democrats. But it's also about the crisis of legitimacy in the state itself. I think there's a crisis afoot, and when there's a crisis, you want to bring in as many people with guns within. And so there's a lot of companies that are benefiting, like Blackwater, like, uh, does this sound familiar? Uh, Halliburton is building immigrant prisons. Uh, all these electronic surveillance companies are getting multi-million, multi-billion dollar contracts, in the case of Boeing, uh, to surveil, jail, and harass immigrants. And so, um, you know, this, this whole anti-immigrant moment is extremely profitable for the stock portfolios of uh, a lot of companies.
Mm. Uh, Roberto Lovato, can you talk about the Three Amigos Summit that took place in uh, New Orleans, or as it came to be known, President Bush meeting with the heads of state of Canada and Mexico? Yeah, there was the, the uh, this is the the the, the least the, the most recent in a series of meetings that have taken place between the heads of state of Canada, Mexico, and the United States. And it's interesting to look at what their agenda is. It's primarily about free trade and security. Okay, and that's not a coincidence. It's not that they just put this together. It's the fact that in order to implement the free trade policies in Mexico that drive migration, that destroy workers' rights and the environment, and that cause you know, crisis after crisis. And now to do that in the United States and in Canada, you're not just going to need to implement new laws. You're going to have to back up the, uh, yourself up with military uh, force, as you see in the case of, of the discussions that we had about Plan Mexico. Plan Mexico is essentially a plan to militarize, or what I would call Colombianize Mexico. You, I was in Michoacan last year, and it's one of the most militarized parts of Mexico with a country with no history of a, a modern history of a, of a military, uh, of a militarized society like the rest of Latin America. And so uh, the, the summits are about fomenting free trade and helping to create excuses uh, for putting, again, more people with guns in our societies, whether it's in Mexico and Michoacan, in the countryside, where they're knocking on people's doors and capturing them and causing more people to migrate, or whether it's in Canada or now here in the United States, where you see the raids. You look at those images, Amy, that you had of, uh, say, MacArthur Park in Los Angeles. You, if you took away the LAPD names on those. That would look just like Gaza. If you look at the weaponry, the way they're dressed, etc. So these are visual, clear indicators of the fact that immigration is not just about immigrants. It's as much about those of us that are citizens and instilling fear and normalizing the idea that it's okay to have people with guns and uniforms in times of crisis and meltdown like we have now. Well, I want to thank you for joining us, Roberto Lovato, uh, speaking to us from New York. Uh, Roberto you, Lovato writes for New American Media, a uh, frequent contributor to The Nation magazine, and our guest here in studio in Los Angeles as we continue on the road. Christopher Scherer, staff attorney for the Center for Human Rights and Constitutional Law, and Mike Whitehead, one of the employees at Micro Solutions, who was detained on February 7th uh, during the ICE raid. This is Democracy Now! democracynow.org, the War and Peace Report. When we come back, we'll be joined by one of the lead organizers of the protests that are taking place around the country, one of the largest expected to be right here in Los Angeles. Then we'll talk to dock workers. And finally, the Reverend Jesse Jackson will be joining us from New York. He's just back from Haiti. Stay with us.
nations are driven to war. There are shadows on the faces of the men who fan the flame. To those wars that have fought in places, we can't even remember their name. On the radio, talk shows, and TV, you hear one thing again and again. How the USA stands for freedom, and how we come to the aid of a friend.